I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are beginning the conversation of we in the flesh can't know all things. We cannot know all things. This is a message to our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latin Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. I have been speaking to brothers and sisters of our nation, and something I'm noticing a lot is people asking the question, why would he do that? Referring to Yahweh, the most high power, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, the creator and the destroyer. So I discuss fringes. The Father has commanded us as the nation of Israel to wear fringes. And that when we look down, we see these fringes and we remember the commandments. And so brothers and sisters will say, well, why? Why fringes? Why not something else? Because he said so. That's why. That's why. Because he said so. There's nothing new under the sun. Brothers and sisters have been questioning and rebelling against the voice of the Father since he brought us out of Egypt. But this is the last of our last captivity. And we really need to stop asking why. Why does he do that? So in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, it speaks to the advantages of being a Jew. Namely, that the oracles of the Most High Power were given unto us. So that through this Bible, we can see the past, the present, and the future. The future through prophecy. We can see our history. We can see the words that were spoken by Yahweh through the prophets and how they have come true. Not a word has failed. And so, the future prophecies shall occur. So these are the things that we can look to, to know where we are in the timeline of the Father's plan. But we, in the flesh, can't know all things. Let us now go to the book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 30. Sirach is also called Ecclesiasticus and can be found in the Apocrypha, which is the middle book of the Bible. For all things cannot be in men, because the Son of Man is not immortal. Yahweh the Most High Power reached down into the deep, rich, dark earth and formed Adam. From Adam came Eve. And through the natural law of a man and a woman together, we all come from the woman. But we are the Son of Man, that man being Adam. For all things cannot be in men. We are in these earthen, earthy vessels. And all things cannot be in us. All understanding cannot be in us. Now, yes, the forefather, King Solomon, was blessed with wisdom. And the father showed him the workings of many things. But all things cannot be in this flesh. They can't. This is a decaying earthen vessel. It cannot contain immortality. The book of the prophet Job, chapter 25, verse 4. How then can man be justified with the Most High Power? How can we question the Most High Power? How can we feel like we are his equal to even ask him why? We're in these earthen vessels that are decaying as we speak, and they must return to the earth, which Yahweh made. He formed us. He formed our souls. He made us. How can we be justified with the most high power? 
Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Behold, even to the moon, and it shineth not, yea, the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man that is a worm, meaning decaying, and the son of man, which is a worm, means decaying, this decaying flesh. How do we feel that we can sit? What gives us the right to question the Most High Power? To say, why? Why do you do that? Why? Why do you do that? What's that about? The Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon can be found in the Apocrypha, which is the middle book of the Bible. For what man is he that can know the counsel of the Most High Power? Or who can think what the will of Yahweh is? We, we, we can't begin to sit down and debate with the Father. To question him. To say, I don't, I don't think that's right. <laughs> what you've done there, I don't think that's right. Can't we do this another way? For what man is he that can know the counsel of the Most High Power, or who can think what the will of Yahweh is? Again, I was having a conversation with a brother. I was bringing the gospel to him, the good news. I said, hey, man, you're part of the mighty nation of Israel. And he asked me a question, and I said, well, you know, everyone on earth was dark-skinned until Esau came along. And so I said, well, in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, chapter 25, Yahweh said unto our foremother, Rebekah, there are two nations in your belly, two manner of people. And Esau came out red and hairy all over. And this is how we get the so-called Caucasians, the Edomites, the Idumeans. And he said, well, why did he do that? And that shows how we still to this day do not want to obey the Father. That's what he did. <laughs> he has his purpose. He has his will. He has his deeper understanding. And we don't get to ask why the father put two manner of people in Rebecca's womb. We don't get to ask that question. We get to look back at our history and say, okay, that's when that began. And we also know by this story in Genesis 25, when the beginning of the nation of Israel shall rise and have a world, time frame, age, span of time, kingdom, without end. When Esau, the so-called white man's kingdom, comes to an end, which we're watching right now. It's happening right now. It is happening right now. Esau is the end and Jacob is the beginning of that which follows. But we don't get to ask why. So if you're coming into this truth and, you, and the Father's waking you up, a powerful question to ask is, what? Who? Who am I? What's going on? <laughs> We can ask what the purpose of a thing is, but not why. A lot of our brothers and sisters hate the dietary laws. Why, why can't I eat the pork? Why? Why, why can't I eat that shrimp? Because it's bad for your health. The, the most high power that exists that designed you says don't eat these things. We might want to listen. The book of the prophet Job Chapter 38, verse 17. This is Yahweh, the Most High Power, speaking to our forefather Job out of the whirlwind. Have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Our forefather Job, righteous man, wise man. But the Father's showing him and those with him and us today through this Bible that we can't know all things. Hast thou perceived the breath of the earth? Declare it if thou knowest it all. Do you know how big the earth is? Really? Do you really know how big the earth is? All of it? Declare if thou knowest it all. Do you know it all? Do you know everything? Verse 19. Where is the way where light dwelleth? Where does the, where does the light live? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? Show me, point to me where darkness exists. Show it to me. 
that thou shouldest take it to the bound thereof, and that thou shouldest know the paths to the house thereof. I stretch the light out. I stretch the darkness out. I know the paths to the houses thereof where they hang out, where they are, waiting to do what I tell them to do. Knowest thou it? Because thou was then born, or because the number of thy days is great, were you around at the beginning to know all things? Are you immortal? No, you're not. This is why Yahweh is called the Ancient of Days. His days are many, 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 innumerable. Verse 35, canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, here we are. Can you tell the lightning to go somewhere? And then the lightning says, here we are, Father. You see us? Here we are. Do you know how to do that? And since we're in the book of Job, let's talk about the forefather Job. When we are going through things in our lives, there's that real pull to say, why is the father doing this to me? Why is the father doing this to me? What is this about? Why is the father doing this to me? Our forefather Job was being debated about in heaven. Hey, Satan, have you tried my servant Job? Have you tried him? Satan said, hey, man, I... You know, you take his money from him, everything from him, he'll he'll turn his back on you real quick. Most I said, all right, give it a shot. Just don't kill him. Debated about in heaven. And at the time, Job doesn't know what's going on. Our forefather Job has no idea that it's going on. So for some of our brothers and sisters today, you could actually be being debated about in the heavens. Take his woman from him and he'll stop going to camp. Make him lose his job and he'll stop doing videos. They'll stop praising your name. They'll turn on you. Have her get into an accident with her brand new car and she'll curse your name. She loves that car more than she loves you. Make it real hard for her to find a good man and she'll turn her back on this truth. You could be being debated about in the heavens right now. So what the Father brings on us, take cheerfully. Because we do not know his counsel. We do not know the will. We do not know the will of the Father. Make no mistake about it. World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother Yahweh Shai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahweh Shai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world, remember who you are, and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.